It all started one day under the mask of nightfall. I had left my boyfriend Louis to go to the social club, also known as the disco. Of course, my friend Rachel had run off again, so I split up with Carrie to find her. I was sure of myself that I would be safe and that nothing would happen. Oh, how very wrong I was. A guy, quite built for the age he looked, with an extremely deep voice, started to say the name Lily to me. I trying to stay as calm as possible, explained to him that I was Summer. My name was not Lily. However, he did not take my words into account whatsoever. He grabbed me forcefully and placed his hand upon my mouth to muffle my desperate screams for help. He, th he, th he then put and shoved me into his van and drove off. When we arrived to this brick house, he flung his door open and grabbed me once more. This time, he didn't muffle my screams. This meant no one could possibly be around to hear my pleas, which made the horrid situation even worse. As I was dragged to the cellar, I kept reheating in my head, I love you, Louis, to prepare myself for what I thought would be certain death. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I collapsed into tears. As I looked up, three girls came into view and smiled at me. One of them said to me, with her hand extended, Come, Lily. As I tried to adjust to my situation, which was not going well whatsoever, all I could think about was Lewis. However, I began to learn the other girls' names. There was Rose, Violet, and Poppy. Then, as Clover came back to the cellar, Violet protested for me. She told Clover how this was wrong and how I was too young. Clover did not handle this well, as he slit Violet's throat. Then I learned that Rose, Poppy, and sometime soon me, were responsible for cleaning up his messes. It seemed so odd to me as they diligently and quickly cleaned up the mess. It made me wonder how often this happened. That would be the first of many when an innocent girl would be killed by Clover and we were the ones responsible to clean it up. As time went on, I learned how to survive in this horrid condition I was in, thanks to Poppy and Rose. They told me how I'd have to shower and apply a light amount of makeup before Clover d comes down for breakfast. I learned how we were to cook for him and clean for him. I also learned how long the other girls had been here. Rose, three years. Poppy, one. I was beyond the fact that when Clover fell in love with us, he would want to make love with us. That made me cry with tremors just thinking about him even touching me. I had so much hope within me that Louis and my family would find me. I found out the purpose of the four vases of flowers on the table. One vase of roses, another of poppies, and one with lilies. The one that previously had violets in it was empty. Clover became extremely angry with Poppy as her flowers had wilted. Clover yelled at her. He claimed that she made the flowers die on purpose to disobey him. I now know that these flowers represent us, and that is why the violets are missing. As I slept in, Rose woke me up with 30 minutes before Clover would be here. She called me Lily. My name is Summer. As Clover came down for breakfast this morning, he brought what looked to be a newspaper. I so desperately wanted to see if it were me on the front page. As Clover greeted me, I could feel his ravenous eyes trailing my body. It made me feel beyond sick to my stomach and so violated. I had no idea what I'm going to do when he wants to make love to me. Once breakfast was over, I went to the couch to finally get catch a glimpse of the newspaper. As I saw the picture of me on the front page, tears started streaming down my face. I hoped they would find me soon. After dinner, Rose, Poppy, and I began watching The Notebook. About halfway through the movie, the cellar door opened loudly, and a girl's scream could be heard echoing throughout the room. This was not a new Violet. This was his next victim. 
As she cried out for help, I felt beyond horrible for not being able to do anything. Clover continued to shout nasty things at the poor girl while he beat her. Finally, he jabbed a knife into her stomach. I wanted to puke as I saw the blood begin to pool. Just as Rose and Poppy ran to clean up the blood, I ran to the bathroom to vomit. Would I ever leave this life? Today was the day I feared. As Clover left, he first kissed Rose, and then Poppy on the cheek, then finally, me. I somehow managed to wait until he left the cellar to run to the bathroom to puke. I was never going to survive what he would want next. As I sat at the toilet sobbing, Poppy came in. I asked her if he was getting worse. Her answer, yes. Today, after receiving new, identical clothes to wear, Clover brought another victim of his down to murder. Her screams pierced my ears as she pleaded for help. Once again, we were the ones to clean it all up and put the poor innocent girl into a body bag. Clover saw the dying flowers today. As expected, this did not go over well. He slammed his fist on the table, making all of us jump. Then, his fist collided with my cheek, sending me to the floor with excruciating pain. A metallic taste soon filled my mouth. My only thought was Lewis. I needed him, and I needed him now. Clover hasn't come down for breakfast after his outburst about the dead flowers. Poppy spoke up to Rose about how Clover is getting worse, and that she knows it. Rose, however, did not know that because of the fact that she had been so, so brainwashed. I knew if all of us worked together, we could escape. Today the worst thing happened. The thing I feared the absolute most. The night Clover would make love to me. I feel nothing. I'm shaking so incredibly hard. I just want to get out of here. That is all I want. I began talking to the second Violet since I've been down here. She had recently gotten here. She seemed to be on my side in relevance to escaping. She suggested poison, but I explained to her that there would be no guarantee that he would die down here. She then said we should try and grab something and hit him as hard as we can once he comes down for dinner. I tried to tell her that that wouldn't work, but she didn't listen. Poppy and Rose huddled in the corner as Violet smashed the vase over Clover's head, doing little damage to him. As expected, Clover became viciously angry. He beat her over and over, and as soon as the blood trickled down his forehead, Clover stormed out. Thankfully, Violet was still left alive. We, we rushed to get the first aid kit and attend to her wounds. As soon as that was done, we lifted her to the bedroom. I was afraid for her life. Clover has not been down for breakfast yet. We had decided to put his meal in the oven if he did come back down. After breakfast, I suggested to Violet that we watch The Notebook again tonight. She said sure, and then asked if Lewis was still looking for me. A dilemma on what to say then arose in my mind. I said to her that I hope he isn't still looking for me because of the fact that I love him, and I want him to be happy. Clover finally came downstairs, but something appeared to be wrong. He explained to us that something has happened, but that we shouldn't worry. I immediately started worrying. He continued by saying that there are some people that want to split our family apart, and that he will never let that happen. Then, he stated that we all need to be good girls, and that it won't hurt, and he will make it quick. Then, he pulled out a knife. I froze instantly. He was going to kill all of us. All of us, so we could be together forever. Violet started to cry as me and her and Poppy began to inch towards the wall. Rose, however, stood still, trembling with fear. After that, everything was a blur. First, Clover had tried to kill Poppy, but Violet interfered. She fell to the floor, clutching her stab wound. I made a quick decision as he turned to Rose. I screamed at him, allowing to Rose to make a run for it. He slapped me, and I fell against the floor. Everything became blurry, but suddenly I heard loud footsteps and men shouting. I heard sirens as well. A man then told me I would be okay, and that he will call my parents when I get to the hospital. I finally got out. However, according to Lewis, 
I had some trouble readjusting to the name Summer. I'd spent so long being Lily that, in my mind, that was my name. I had to give my statement to the police, and I knew I made Lewis furious at Clover. Rose couldn't handle a normal life and committed suicide shortly after escaping. Poppy, well, Becca, and I have become really good friends. As I watched a horror movie with Lewis, he looked at me bewildered as to why I wasn't scared. For me, after my experiences, it just didn't bother me anymore. I still keep everything extremely clean as well. And then we have a cute little Polaroid picture. So that adds to the collection.